Okay, this is, um, in this clip we're going to be going over um, sequences and series and this review um, part. So uh, let's take a look at question number four. It says, the number of lilies a large nursery can sell each day after April 1st is modeled by a sequence whose general term is a sub n equals 1700 minus 75 n, where n is the number of days after April 1st. Find a number of lilies that can be sold on April 6th, 6th 7th, and 8th. Okay, so you have to remember, note that we're looking for the days after April 1st, okay? So, um, <clears throat> on April 2nd, or April 2nd, we're going to have N equals 1 for April 2nd. And then for April 3rd, we're going to have N equals 2. So basically, uh, we just subtract 1 from, from the date, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do is look at the pattern and we notice that it's basically one less, okay? So we're going all the way to April 6th. So if n equals one for a second, then uh, we know that fourth, or well, the fourth day is gonna be n equals three. For the fifth day, n is gonna be equal to four. And then for the sixth day, n is equal to five. So we're basically using n equals five to find out to plug into this formula. Okay, so the explicit formula a n is equal to 1700 minus 75 n. So this is a uh, explicit formula for an arithmetic series because the n is not exponentiated. Okay, so for the sixth day, sixth, for, I'm sorry, for April 6th, uh, for April 6th, we're going to have April 6th, we're going to have um, n equals 5, okay, because we, we started from April 2nd to count, so we kind of like behind by 1. All right, so we're going to plug that there. So a sub 5 is going to be 1700 minus 75 times 5, okay? And then for April 7th, what do you think we're going to have? n equals 6, right? So n equals 6, then that will be a sub 6 equals 1700 minus 75 times 6. And then for April 7th, so April 8th is going to be 75 times 7. Okay, so if we work out 2, that should be sufficient for us to determine what uh, the answer is. All right, so let's bring out our calculators and try this out. So we're going to compute what this expression is equal. So we're going to have for the sixth day, April 6th, 1700 minus 75 times 5 and the answer is 1325 so we can it looks like option a is the answer there option a let's do this april 7 just to make sure so 1700 minus 75 times 6 and we have 12 1250 Okay, so 1325 and 1250, let's write that down, 1325 and 1250, we can clearly see that um, option A is our answer, okay, because that's the one that matches. All right, so we have to be really careful. We got to start counting from April 2nd because this formula works for um, days after April 1st, all right? Okay, now let's move on to question number five. Uh, it says, find the sum of the infinite series. So, um, it's an infinite series. The question is, it, is it geometric or um, arithmetic? We can only find the sum of infinite geometric series, okay? So, when you're talking about infinite series, there's only um, geometric series that has convergence, all right? So, this is an infinite geometric series, and the formula for the infinite geometric series, S of infinity, is equal to A1 over 1 minus r, okay? a1 is the first term, which is 20, and r is what you get when you divide the second term by the first term, or a term divided by a term before it, okay? So a2 is negative 15, and a1 is 20, okay? If you divide this out, divide top and bottom by 5, you have negative 3 over 4. You notice that this common ratio is between 1 and negative 1. That is why we can actually compute the infinite sum, all right, because of the convergence series. So S of infinity 
is going to be 20 over 1 minus negative 3 over 4. Okay? So it's going to become 20 over 1 plus 3 over 4 because minus times minus is a plus. Express this as a fraction. Multiply by 4 top and bottom. Multiply by 4, multiply by 4. And then you're going to have uh, 20 divided by 4, uh, 4 over 4 plus 3 over 4. So we have um, 20 divided by 7 over 4. Now we'll multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator times 4 over 7. Multiplying across, your final answer will be 80 over 7. The answer is option letter C for number 5. All right, let's take a look at question number 6. Um, we're asked to find the sum of this series right here. Now, let's take a look at it. Number 6, this series is expressed in sigma notation. We're going from n equals 5 to 20 of 6n plus 23. Now, this series is um, a, an arithmetic seri series because the variable is not expressed exponentiated okay this variable were a power and it would be a geometric series okay so since an arithmetic series we have to use the appropriate formula for for the sum of n terms of an arithmetic series s of n is equal to n over 2 times a 1 plus a n okay all right so in this case um let's find n first n is simply the the last term minus the first term plus 1. Okay, so basically how many numbers are there from 5 to 20? Okay, so it's going to be 15 plus 1, which is 16. Okay, so n is 16. Uh, now, the first term a1 is what you get when you plug in the lower bound into the variable. Okay, like that. So you're going to have a1 is going to be 6 times 5, plus 23, basically 30 plus 23, which equals 53, okay? And then a sub n is what you get when you plug the upper bound into the variable, plug in 20 into n. So you have uh, 6 times 20 plus 23. So 6 times 20 is 120, uh, plus 23, which equals 143, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is put all these together into the formula. So we're going to have um, S of N is going to be N over 2, 16 over 2, times A1, 53, plus AN, 143, okay? Um, it's basically going to be 8 times 196, okay? All right, let's uh, compute that with our calculators. So uh, let's do this. 8 times 196. So our answer is 1,568. So SN is uh, 1,568, and we can clearly see that our answer is option letter A, okay? All right, let's take a look at question number seven. Now, I'm going to shift gears and work on infinite limits for a second. So, we have to find the limit, um, the limit as x goes to infinity of uh, negative x to the fourth, minus 8x to the third plus 4x squared minus 15x plus 22 and then that divided by um divided by 5x to the fourth plus x to the third plus x squared minus 5x minus 8 uh, if you look at, uh, since there's a limit involving infinity, we can um, observe the, the weights, okay? 
So if you notice that uh, in this case, we have equal weights because the degree of the numerator is 4 and the degree of the denominator is 4 also. Okay? So since they have equal degrees, all we're just going to do is extract those two and just divide them and then that will tell us what the limit is. Okay? So we're going to take the limit as x approaches infinity of negative x to the 4 over 5x to the 4. Okay? So the x to the, x to the 4 goes here once x to the 4 goes there once, and then you're going to have the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 1 over 5, okay? Since this limit, since there's no more variable here, this limit, this value is independent of where x goes, so your final answer is simply going to be negative 1 over 5. So we can clearly see that our answer is option letter A. All right, let's move on to question eight, the finite limit. Um, so we are to find for number eight, the limit as x approaches seven of x squared minus 49 over x minus seven, okay? We can clearly see that if we just substitute um, seven directly into the variables, plug in seven here and plug in seven there, we're going to run into some complication because we have 7 squared minus 49 over 7 minus 7. And then we have 49 minus 49 over 0. Okay, and we have a 0 on the bottom is kind of is undefined. You can't find out what the limit is. So since we have that issue, that means we need to go back here and simplify first, okay? So we have the limit as x approaches 7. Now we can factor the numerator, uh, since it's a difference of squares, we just take the square root of the first and the last and write the sum and the difference of the square roots, that over x minus 7, okay? And then uh, now let's see what happens. We can divide it, x minus 7 goes here 1, x minus 7 goes here 1. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches 7 of x plus 7. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we can just plug in 7 into the uh, this expression without any issues here because the, the discontinuity was a removable discontinuity, okay? So plug it in, so we have 7 plus 7, which equals 14. So that's the limit of this expression as x approaches 7. So we can clearly see that our answer is option letter, uh, option letter C. Okay, there you have it. Okay, let's move on to question number nine. Question nine. Um, it's another limit problem. So we have to find question nine. Find the limit as that uh, as h approaches zero of seven plus h. I'm sorry, f of 7 plus h minus f of 7 over h if uh, f of x equals x squared plus 5x, okay? All right, so we're going to break this down. Uh, we can't plug in 0 exactly into this because we have some problems in the denominator. Let's find out what each of these functions um, are, and then we're going to plug it in, okay? So f of 7 plus h is a composite function. So what does that mean? It means that we're going to be substituting this expression into the x's in this function, okay? So we know f of x is um, x squared plus 5 x. So anywhere we have the uh, x's, we replace with 7 plus h, okay? So instead of x squared, we're going to have 7 plus h quantity squared plus 5 times, and it's a x again, we're going to replace it with 7 plus h. Alright, and then now we let's simplify this. We're going to have 7 plus h times 7 plus h because of the square. And then distribute this 5 to both terms in the parentheses, plus 35 plus 5h. Okay, and now let's follow this out. First outer inner last, first is 30, I'm sorry, 49. Outer is uh, 7h, inner is 7h, last is h squared, plus 35 plus 5h. 
Now let's combine like terms here. We have h squared, and then we have 7h, 7h, 5h. 14 plus 5 is 19, plus 19h. And then 40, 49 plus 35, uh, 4 carry 1 is 84. Okay? All right. Now, um, let's look for f of 7. f of 7, this basically means that wherever we have x, we will plug in 7 into the original function. Okay, so instead of x squared plus 7, I mean x squared plus 5x, we're going to have 7 squared plus 5 times 7. Okay? All right, so there you have it. Okay, so if we work this out, we're going to have 7 squared is 49, plus uh, 35, 49 plus 35 is 84, okay? Alright, so we're going we're gonna to put everything together into this limit, and then evaluate what the limit is, okay? So, uh, it's not going to become the limit as h approaches 0 of h squared plus 19h plus 84 minus 84. This whole expression is f of uh, 7 plus h, and this is f of 7. Uh, this whole story divided by um, divided by by h. Divide this by h. All right. So we can't plug in eight zero here also because we still have h in the bottom and that's a problem. So let's simplify it as much as we can first. Okay, so 84 minus 84 is a zero. And then um, we have the limit as h approaches zero of h square plus 19h over h. Now we can factor out the h from the numerator. So we have the limit as h approaches zero of h times h plus 19 over h. Okay, I can divide these two h's, and then um, you're going to have the limits as h approaches 0 of h plus 19. Okay, so we're going to plug in 0 into this expression. We have 0 plus 19, and our final answer is 19, and that's option letter A. Okay, so there you have it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. You can feel free to subscribe to my channel uh, by clicking up here. And then you can also click like or um, post a comment to let me know what you think about this clip. More clips can be found on mapgoodserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.